from turnstile to turnstile. Let's talk theme parks. Welcome to Park Hopper Podcast. Welcome back. This is episode five of the Park Hopper Podcast. I am Dominic Evko, and we are here with Peter Brookhart. Peter, I am so happy to be back after uh, really a, a hectic. Um, you won't like to say busy, but it was a busy you know week, especially for you. Yeah, we had uh we did have we were very preoccupied for the past say probably two weeks, but we're back. We got a good plan. We got, we got an exciting couple episodes planned ahead of us, especially these next two. Right, for sure. And before we get started, I just want to go ahead and mention that um, you can go ahead and follow Peter and Sarah at the Brookhart Project on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can go follow myself and my girlfriend Victoria on YouTube at Dominic and on Instagram at Dominic Eats De- uh, De- Dom and Vic Eats Detroit uh, for all of our foodie adventures. I also want to go ahead and mention that you can email us your theme park testimonials at parkhopperpodcast at gmail.com and we can read those on the air. It um, doesn't have to be a Disney or Universal theme park. It can be any theme park that you've been to. You want us to read a story that um, uh, you kind of have um, from one of those parks. And you can also, um, if you feel generous enough, you can go on to Patreon. Um, And I'll let Peter kind of explain more of that a little bit. Yeah, so Patreon is a little, like, our exclusive, like, I call it like a social media or a Facebook. It's going to be where we put special exclusive content for varying levels of being a patron. So you help our initiative here as Park Hopper Podcasts uh, by, it's almost like, it's pretty much like a donation per month. But given those amounts, you get different levels of your, like, ownership or club level like you a different amounts give you different content like we're going to be doing some ride throughs of rides where we're going to have over audio overlays of our commentary about experiences or history of rides and then we're going to have small little uh i4 rambles where we're just going to get on get on our phone get in our in our microphone and just do you know two to three minute ramble about something that's just on our mind what'll be one or one or both of us so Definitely something to check out. We have a lot of planned content coming exclusively to the Patreon. So you, you check that out at patreon.com backslash parkhopper podcast. Beautiful, beautiful. So I say uh, we get started here. Um, this episode is a uh, part one of a part two series that we're doing, and that is with Disney restaurants. And uh, for this episode, we are going to both go ahead and name off our top five quick service restaurants. At the Walt Disney World Resort. I warn you, this may get a little bloody. This may get a little heated. Um, just because me and Dom both love food, we're both very passionate, and uh, we don't know. We we're going into this blind. Neither of us know each other's top fives, and I've been with Dom at a lot of his food and beverage experiences, and I might have to call him out if I don't think like if he's like you know this is two and this is one. I'm like no, come on, that that should be reversed. That shouldn't even be on the list. So just. Everybody get ready. This is going to be an emotional ride. I say we start out from number five to one, but I also, this just came to me. Um, if you would like to do it, we don't have to. I think we should give an honorable mention at the very end. Okay. If it's yeah, up to you. Yeah. Something that maybe you wanted to put on, it kind of was close to being on the list, but you didn't. Yeah. Didn't put it on there. Yeah. I, okay. I, got, I got mine for both. All right. So I'll start out. My number five quick service restaurant in Walt Disney World, I didn't know how to say the name because I looked it up and I, I just didn't want to butcher it. But mine is the uh, France Pavilion Quick Service kind of courtyard cafe um, at Upcot. That is a place where you can kind of go in and they got a bunch of uh, uh, baguettes, it is ham and always, cheese sandwiches. It is always busy. It is, and it is, and it's for good reason. And they got, I mean, the the creme brulees, the um, just so many different fe- uh, French pastries, and that is something that kind of has been a staple for my family the past couple of years. You know, wanting, you know, because even sometimes the quick service isn't necessarily cheap. And going there and getting, you know, a baguette is probably you know eight inches long, stuffed with ham and cheese. They can toast it for you, and I don't think it's any more than say six or seven dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a really good, I think, bargain for your buck, and it's it's actually really, really good. So that is my number five, and that is the French Pavilion 
um, the quick service restaurant inside there, and I'm not going to say the name. Peter, do you have any thoughts or rebuttals to, to my number five quick service restaurant? I have two commentaries. No rebuttals, but commentaries. First, I had no idea you guys used to go there. No idea. We it's my it's actually it's my it's my parents like one of their favorite things to do, um, when they go to Epcot, um, and it's just kind of it is it's something cheap. I there's a lot of you know quick service restaurants, um, and the variety there is do, amazing. Right, and we could do a, a worse. We'll have to do like a worst episode too, and I'll just kind of this might be a spoiler alert, but like the Japan quick service restaurant, right? Oh, I think it's I've never I think it's experience. terrible, and it's expensive. Mm-hmm. Where I could go pay say. I don't know the number off of my head, six or seven dollars for a sandwich that truly is, you know, say you were to go to like a nice, you know, deli market back in your hometown, that's the type of sandwich you're getting. Or I say add a couple more bucks to the price of Japan and go to a table service. Um, but my other comment about the quick service in the back of France is I don't know if you've realized this, but we've done it maybe two or three times in since we moved down here. That is like our new favorite go to spot on the weekends in the morning. We okay. go there, and for less than $5, I can get a coffee and that full-size baguette. But what we'll do is we'll go there in the morning. Like, first thing, like, we'll park at Boardwalk or sometimes just park at Epcot, get there right at Park Open or before, go over to go over to France, get a cup of joe, get a, a thing of apple juice or orange juice for Sarah, get just a baguette, just a plain baguette. I think it's two fifty. They give you butter. It's fresh. It was baked that day. And... Just sit down in the nice morning sun, watching families come in for the first time and starting the day. It's like the same thing they like to do at, at Main Street on the, on uh, at Magic Kingdom in the morning after getting Starbucks. Just sit there and enjoy bread and coffee. Like, what's more down to earth or like just more like staple like food life than just bread and coffee? And right. I love and it's, it. The, and those little tables with the chairs. I mean, it does the whole ambiance just makes it right. Well, I I like that. Um, I'm looking at my list and I feel confident in my ratings, but the next two my, I can kind of switch depending on it. But my 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 number five favorite is at I think it's, it's technically at the Boardwalk. No, 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 it's at the Beach Club, and that is Beaches and Cream. Is that a quick? Are you talking about the ice cream stand or the the sit, sit down, down portion where you can get ice ice cream? That's where we ate the. That's, that's where you got the. That's where we got the kitchen sink. It's a quick service. Uh, yeah. Well, they got, they've, really? they've got hot dogs. They've got sandwiches. They've got uh, grilled cheese. It's super good. So if you were to have the dining plan, that would be considered a quick service. It's a quick service restaurant. I did not know that. And that might have been on my list if I would have known that. You, I forgot what year it was, but one time we came down with, we ate there and it was us, Matt, our friends Ellen and Lauren from college and Sarah, we all got like food, food, and it was really good. I think Sarah got a grilled cheese, and I'm still thinking about it right now. Yeah. So it's my top five, and that is great for uh, lunches, dinners, and of course, when you move to the Disney World for the Disney College program, and what do you think could be more of a bonding experience for your roommates? You get all, say, through two to six of you, college age. Um, metabolism through the roof. You get in there and you get the kitchen sink. I think it's like what was it like forty bucks? The kitchen sink? Yeah. I don't think it's that much. No, you think it's like thirty no. or twenty five? Yeah, I think it's like in the twenties. I don't think we could afford it afford because we got it ourselves one time. I don't Me think we would have yeah, paid. That's it. a whole different story. Because I, I think I pay, I think I paid for. It. I think I because we got the nachos and the kitchen sink that one time. Yeah. And I think it the the only way I got you to come is I said I would pay for it. But I think so. I, I don't think, think we I would split the nachos. I, did we? Because I say I don't. I couldn't imagine myself buying all that. No, no. Yeah, uh, but it's definitely a good time. It's it's the most amount of ice cream you can ever imagine and toppings. And all I'll say is either go with friends or eat it quick, because right. it melts fast. Right, I agree. And uh, moving on to our number fours. See, I want to clarify too. These these top fives could easily, I mean, change for me. Right. And I don't nece- I don't necessarily mean that these are the best foods. Sometimes these on my list are something that I have a memory about. Or you know, you know what I'm saying. So um, if you disagree with me, that is okay. This is just my personal opinion. I'm still gonna give you a hard time. All right. So my number four, um, I move on to a resort and. I've stayed here a number of times. Uh, I stayed here when I was seasonal a lot for months at a time during the summers, and that is the Pop Century Food Court. That is a food court that I think 
has a ton of options. Um, everything seems to always be good. I know their menu is a lot different than the last time I stayed there, actually. It seems like it's even more, you know, a little bit more upscale, shall I say. Pineapple Dole Whip. Yeah, well, yes, and they got the Pineapple Dole Whip, and you can go uh, see that um, video, uh, Peters. Um, I think you and Sarah just did a video just strictly going to Pop Century for the Dole Whip, basically, right? Yeah, and uh, if you actually check that out, there's we show the menus for all of them, too, and, and you would still think it's on your top five with the new one, because I'm not sure. I don't remember. I remember what it looked like before, but I don't know what the was on the menu, but you got the meatball sandwich, you've got pizzas, flatbreads, pasta, salads, burgers, the most delicious-looking burgers. They had a whole and like healthy options, some cheesecake too. Oh. The the uh, the rainbow cheesecake. It was out. Looks disgusting. It was out when we went there. Really? Yeah. I, that's I was the one thing I've it. never had. I was gonna it's get always it. in. The photo is always in the elevator whenever you go in there. <laughs> Haunted. But you. like I said, you know, Pop Century is somewhere that I've been a lot to, and I've been to other. You know, a lot of the resorts, all of them actually, not stayed at them, but been to them and. You know, their food courts can't really compare to, say, the the Value Resort food courts. And Pop Center, I think, I mean, some people might say Art of Animation has a, a better one. But in my opinion, I've stayed there so much that I kind of have that attachment to Pop Century. So that is my number four quick service restaurant in Walt Disney World. I think my number four quick service is going to surprise you. You have any any idea what it is? I'll give you a hint. It's It's in park. In park? It's in a park. Well, that's, I mean, what park? Epcot. Epcot. Is it the Electric Umbrella? The place I worked in for six months in a deep fire? Yeah, that's, that's my favorite restaurant, Tom. That's my absolute, no, it's not. Well, you said surprise me. Yeah, that would have been a surprise, but that's not it. Okay, I, I give up. Tell me. The Sunshine Seasons. In the, in the land. So that's a go-to for... Uh, we actually had breakfast there. We did. Uh, we did. Last February. That was our last breakfast we had. Mm-hmm. And I think they've got a, it's such a surprise when you walk in there and you think like a lot of people go to Epcot, go straight to the land, and the first thing in the morning to get, um, to get either a well, that doesn't work anymore because it's not paper fast pass. They go to, they go straight to Epcot, right at park open, and run to the land to go onto Soren. But what they don't realize is they're they're running or walking past one of the best quick service places. I think just for breakfast. I've never had. I don't even know if they do. I don't think they do dinner because of the um, the full service restaurant across from it. But the breakfast, you've got a wide variety of these big sandwiches to omelets to a la carte items. You can get them. It's probably one of the only places that you can get like. I think for a period they were doing Monster and Red Bull for a little bit. Really? Um, but they have so much, so much, so many options, and it's always changing too. Like they've got their staples, like your omelet and your sandwiches, your breakfast sandwiches, and your wraps, and then they throw crazy things in there all the time. So that's my number four. Um, I have to agree with everything you said because my number three on my list is Sunshine Seasons. Oh, look at that! So would you look at that? Great minds think alike. I, I mean, this could vary. Some people say that this is by far the number one quick service location i disagree in all of disney world I, a lot of people I, hard no for me fo- well food court shall i say it's still hard no when yeah, you look at pop century and you look at art of animation oh sorry you want to know why i think it is that way and i'll, I'll tell you this why? one thing some people might not know living with the land they use all those plants and fruits and vegetables inside the disney restaurants and i think the sunshine seasons is one of the main places they do utilize those crops um, from that ride and the one thing also is that you know pop century don't get me wrong has a ton of stuff but i think sunshine seasons their their variety seems to be a little bit more gourmet and healthier you know you get those those salmon dishes the i think they have rotisserie chickens um, i've seen at times so it just kind of has that more of a table service type dining experience you, at a food it does, court. yeah. It doesn't feel like a fast food joint, right? It, doesn't have the chicken nuggets and French fries and stuff <laughs> like that, right? Right. So that was your three. Correct. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in Epcot. I think you will forget this is a quick service one, but I'm staying in Epcot. Okay. We're leaving Future World. We're taking a little walk over to uh, to World Showcase. We're going okay. far in World Showcase. 
almost to the International Gateway, but not not the International Gateway. Right before there, there's a little amazing little gem there. Okay. It's a must do for Dom. I mean, you know what? If you remember this as a quick service, I guarantee it's on your list. If not one. Okay. Yorkshire County Fish. I like that place a lot. Fish and chips. It is by far the best fish and chips. To anybody that is from um, New England, Maine, Great Britain, or Britain. Well, Great Britain. I'm sure your fish and chips are better than here. But as an American and someone that has born and raised here and never been outside of the U.S. outside of Canada, these are the best fish and chips I've ever had in my life. I and I had fish and chips the other day, and I told them every time I have, them, I go. They're good, but they're not Epcot. And it, Dom has literally said every time, it's not a trip to Epcot without getting fish and chips. To the point where we were beyond full last time. Remember we were Epcot together? Yeah. We were beyond full. Right for illuminations. Beyond full. Still went and got fish and chips. They are they are so good. They're I mean, the, the breading is just flaky enough, but still um, kind of you know soft. And the fish is good. And the french fries are very good. Mm-hmm. Throw a little malt and vinegar on there and some tartar sauce. Good to go. I'm surprised Sarah's not like scratching at the door when she heard me say fish and chips. It's like her favorite, probably one of her favorite items in all of Disney. I almost went, um, well, me and Victoria went out with her family last Friday, and I was really craving chicken tenders because I wanted like buffalo sauce and ranch. But I also, they said the fish and chips are good. And I should have got them because I didn't and I got the chicken tenders and they weren't that good. But I. In the back of my head, I always think, I'm going to get these fish and chips, and I'm going to be disappointed because they're not at Epcot. I do the same thing. I don't know why I do it to myself. That's a good one, Peter. Thank you. I really like that one. Thank you. I really like that one. So, now on to our number two uh, quick service restaurant. Mine goes to, um, this might come to a surprise to you. Don't think it will. And I think not only do they have good food, I think it has a nostalgic factor for me. It was one of the places we ate at the most on our college program. Uh, We had a friend that worked there, and that is the Columbia Harbor House in the Magic Kingdom. Really? That is my number two quick service. Now, do I think they have the best food at um, a quick service? Not necessarily, because a lot of their food is the same as other quick services, but they do have different options because it, it is a seafood place. So they do have like the fish sticks and you know, the lobster rolls, but something about this place, when I go to it, I just think Disney, it has a homey feel. I uh, like the new England theme inside of it. You go to that upper deck and you can look out the window and see the haunted mansion and see the poop river. That's going right over there. Um, it's just the details. It's just a great Dom, spot. The details. Like the, like, did you ever look at, so this is, I, I would like to know, and I'll look next time we go to see if I can find how many, what's the seating capacity? Because this place is huge. You don't realize right. it's it's massive. Got a whole second floor, has multiple rooms. The theming is ridiculous. Every different theme, every different room on the second floor is themed for something different. There's even a ghost right. ship room where they have maps of all the sunken ships up and down the New England coast. Columbia Harbor House is amazing. And they also, Dom, I don't even know if you realize this. They change their menu a lot. Like they always yeah. have like their lobster roll. They always have like uh, New, England, New England clam chowder is always a must. Which is have. actually very good. Very good. Very and I'm a, good. I'm a clam chowder uh, connoisseur. Oh. If they if they have a clam chowder at a restaurant, you get it. Almost ten times out of ten, I get it. Just like your fried calamari complex. I love fried calamari. You every time I'm with you and we're in a restaurant, if it's an appetizer, we get it. Yeah, for sure. Um, God, what else? Columbia Harbor is just amazing, and it's always quick. And now you—I don't know if you've tried this, but mobile ordering is there, and it, it is—it is nice. And they and every customer knows their stuff, and it's very efficiently run. And they're and they've got the sauce stations, a plethora, because nothing's more frustrating when you go into a restaurant with lots of seats like that, and their napkins and their straws and the condiment sections are so far away, are so busy. They've got these hidden away. They pop out. It's, I've never been at one that isn't busy, and they've got tables. For school trips, you could fit 20 people at a table. They've got little tables for two. So literally any family could be accommodated. And that's, of course, I don't know if we mentioned it, is in the Magic Kingdom, right across from Haunted Mansion. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. Right, right yeah, across I from did. Haunted Mansion. Do you remember they put us in there? No, you don't because you weren't there. That's where they shoved. They, they put us. They did for the Halloween party. Okay, yeah, so you were. You were. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. They, remember when they shoved us in there for the Halloween party? Right. Well, they, yes. As a cast member, we got to go to a, a cast member preview of the Halloween party before... Um, 
before the Halloween's party started in September of that year. So they actually led us through the Utilidors, which we'll discuss in a different episode probably. Um, it's, it's Magic Kingdom's tunnels. We entered through the cast member entrance, came up into Columbia Harbor House with the doors closed, and they kept all a couple hundred cast members in there while they walked all the guests out of the park. And then they let us out of, the, out of Columbia Harbor House at like 12.30 in the morning, Magic Kingdom empty. And then we just got to get different spots all along Main Street for the Halloween party or the Halloween parade, right. which I, of course, then later did for my friend Dominic, who was in the Christmas parade. Correct. And I did the, sa- I did the same thing for that one, too. And I remember that day like it was yesterday. We got a photo of it, me, you, Shane, and Matt, mm-hmm. um, waiting at West Clock bus stop, um, making weird faces. It's a good... I remember that day. It was the best. It was the best. I think that I've talked so much about Columbia Harbor House that the only reason why I can say it's okay that I talk that much about Columbia Harbor House is because it's also my number two. Is it really? For real. Good thing we didn't tell each other. Right there. Chicken scratch. Beautiful. Oh, I C-H-H. See I know my number one is typical, but I'll bounce it back to you since I've already been rambling about Columbia Harbor House. If you're not, one last thing is if you are not a fish eater, you can still go to Columbia Harbor House. They always have. Correct. I think it's they always have at least two options that are not fish. They've got a burger. They've got a wrap. They usually have the classic chicken Caesar salad within all the quick service restaurants. Um, they've got it's a larger menu than you realize and a really unique kids menu, too, for those families out there that have little ones that it's not just mac and cheese and chicken nuggets options. It's you've got actual good fish and other options for kids. Right, for sure. And before I get to my number one, I saw your number one, and I was going to do that. Put it. I wasn't going to make it my number one because it, it still wouldn't be my number one. I was going to put it on my list, but because some people might not know that that is you know, considered quick service, I didn't put it. But my number one, uh, drum roll please, <laughs> is Yorkshire Fish House at Epcot. Oh, I knew it. That is my number one. I didn't want to ruin the surprise. Some people might not know it's a quick service because it's just a small little stand. I've talked a lot about it, but it does have the best fish and chips ever. Um, when we stay at the boardwalk or the yacht club or the beach club, my dad has had me walk into Epcot, get fish and chips, and bring them out back to the hotel room because they love them so much. And I do too. And I literally, it might be one of my favorite things to eat on Disney property. I believe it, and it's that good. But to someone from uh, Great Britain, they're probably terrible. I will they're say probably one terrible fish and time, chips. when we were in line with you and Victoria, I heard the cast member tell the guest in front of us. Now, this could just be the cast member trying to be nice. Uh, the cast member did tell the guest in front of me that out of any of the fish and chip places he's eaten in all of Europe and in other places he's been in America... Those fish and chips are the closest to the fish and chips back home. He didn't say they were better or just as good, but he said they were the closest thing when it comes to the oil and the breading and the taste of the fish. But more so, he was talking about the the breading and the oil, the closest thing to fish and chips back at home. That makes me happy that Disney would want to do that, too, to make it have that more authentic feel. I wish they gave it really on newspaper, which I know would be real nasty because the ink would be like on the fish and chips. But I just think like so they, when you go there, you get it in this like plastic wrap, like food wrap, like like a like almost like what a burger comes in from a fast food joint. But it's it's printed on there like newspaper because when you go, I don't think they do it anymore. But when back in the day, when you go and get fish and chips from like a quick place or a restaurant in the, anywhere in the UK or anywhere else, they sold it. They'd hand it to you wrapped up in newspaper. Beautiful, Peter. So what's, uh, I'm curious, then what's your honorable mention? Do you want to do that now, or do you want to wait till you do your number one? Oh, I didn't even realize I didn't do my number one. My number one, Don mentioned it, a lot of people won't realize, I think, that it's quick service, or maybe they just don't realize it's part of the quick service, because for me, and I think you, and for a lot of people, it's almost like they forget that it's part of Disney, because it's got such a big character, and they are other places in the world, like in your airport, like in Las Vegas, there's one in the, uh, where did I stay? There's one in Detroit airport. There's one in the Las, uh, planet Hollywood at Las, in Las Vegas. There's a, there's two there then. Cause there's one in the, uh, Caesar's palace. That's what, that's where I, that's where I went when I was there for our honeymoon. Okay. I know for sure there's one in planet Hollywood. So there's two there. 
I'm not sure where there's else like there's a couple, there's a couple one. more. But that is the one and only in Disney Springs, Earl of Sandwich. Now this it is a great place. It is a great place. That sandwich, and I, I got to tell you, I have to confess, I always, always, always get the holiday sandwich because now it is year round. The holiday sandwich is a turkey sandwich. Now the thing about Earl sandwich is the bread. The bread is where it's at. I think that's what everybody loves about it. But the holiday sandwich is turkey, cranberry sauce, um, stuffing, gravy. And there's a couple other little things that I'm missing, but that's the bulk of it. And it's amazing. But I know it's blasphemous, but I went there last week with Sarah and Tyler. And, you know, I'm trying to eat better, trying to get ready for this, this marathon next January. I got a wrap. Did you really? Was it good, though? It was amazing. What kind of wrap was I it? I think it was a chicken salad wrap, but it had okay. olives, it had banana peppers, and it was the most, like, flavor. There was, there was such a diverse amount of flavor in it, and Sarah got a buffalo. No, maybe I got the buffalo. I think I got the buffalo chicken and had olives and banana peppers, and I forgot what Sarah got, but it was still really good. But nothing beats Earl's Sandwich. I know there's things on there that I haven't, I haven't, I haven't tried most of the menu. But I've tried a couple other items, but mostly the holiday sandwich. That is Disney World to me, the way it smells, the way it tastes. We went there a lot in our college program, too, I think. We did. We did. We went there quite often. It's, it's always a must-do whenever you go on a Disney vacation. If you're just getting back from the airport, want something quick, hop over to downtown Disney. I would go there a lot like on our um, when I was doing seasonal work over in Disney. Uh, I was staying at the hotel, so obviously you know, I didn't want to eat at the food courts the whole time, but I would, you know, Go out to downtown Disney and I uh, grab a sandwich at Earl. And they got good soups too. I've had a, quite a few of those. No, they are very good. Everything is good. All right, what's your? All right. I'm, I'm curious about your honorable mention because I, I know I don't think you've had my honorable mention and I don't think many of you even talked about it a lot, but you go first. So, my honorable mention is I was thinking about Earl Sandwich because I wasn't sure if I should put that because it technically isn't Disney owned. But um, you can you can use this, you can use your dining plan there. I'm yes, I know you can. And so my honorable mention used to be one of my favorite restaurants on Disney, and it was because you could use a quick service. Um, I already know what it is for this, and I I assume you still can. I haven't had a dining plan in a long time, so I'm not sure. But mine is right connected to Earl's Sandwich, and that is Wolfgang Puck Express. Is that what you thought I was going to say? Yes. That, I mean, I, I remember the first time I went there is back in like 2009. And it was some of the best mac and cheese I've ever had. Um, their pastas are good. I'm, a, I'm an Italian. So obviously you have your, your homemade cooking from your, your mom and your grandparents and whatnot. Aren't and you Sicilian? I don't really, yeah. Well, let's, don't get me started. You're Sicilian, so, You're Sicilian though, right? Yes, I am. Okay, okay. Just make it sure. So, you have, you know, you don't really get spaghetti outside of which your family makes, but I'll get spaghetti there and it's pretty good. And everything there has been pretty decent. Their pizzas are good. Pizzas it's are pretty good. That's the only thing I get there is pizza. Right. It's pretty affordable, too. And the fact that you can use it as a quick service, I mean, if you think about it, say you go to Columbia Harbor House, spend uh, $11 on chicken nuggets and french fries, or you go to. Um, Wolfgang Puck Express and have to pay $15, $16 for a pizza, but then if you have a dining plan, it can use your um, your credits towards either of those. You're actually getting a really good deal with using that towards Wolfgang Puck Express because it's, it's not the cheapest of a quick service restaurant. No, and I'll throw a, this is a completely different subject. Well, not completely, but I don't know if you know this. With the dining plan now, even with a quick service credit, if you are of age, you get an alcoholic drink. Wait, what? If for if for one quick service credit, if you're 21, you can get a beer or a mixed oh, drink okay. with like we were with friends and we went to Yak and Yeti quick service, and uh-huh. he and my friend got a beer with his order. Oh, as Yeti, your drink, as his drink for his quick service credit. Oh, really? It's very new. I think it's like three or four weeks old. That saves quite a, I'm sure, a lot of money doing that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so my honorable mention. I just wanted to throw that little snippet out there. Uh, my honorable mention is from the new and exciting world of Pandora. And that is Santuli Canteen. Um, they, you're going to love it. Like, I don't know. I'm going to try the I, cheeseburger buns. I don't know. I don't even think you should do that. I think you should just go straight for the bowls they have. They are so rich in flavor and 
and a good quality and diverse palate in there. The desserts look amazing. Um, the beer selection in there is good, but just the service and the and the presentation, the bowls are different, the plates are different. You're gonna love it, whether you get the bowl, the th- bowls or not, the bowls or not, or the pods. Well, I, I think is what they call them. I do plan on um, going to Avatar Land when I come down in a couple weeks. Not sure how much time I'll spend in there, but I do want to visit it. Maybe we will have to sample something in there. There you go. And give it a try because I love new things. Well, Peter, that was great. I enjoyed that thoroughly. So did I. Um, I'm excited I am for table now. service, and we have to. We're about to uh, get ready for the next episode where we discuss table services, and I'm sure we need to make sure we have a full stomach going into that. And what I will say real quick, Dom, is I'm gonna put down below when I edit this. I'll put it in any links. I'll go through our old Fab Five Two Hundred Seven footage and any new footage Sarah and I have of us spotlighting, not just in and eating, but like a real good showcase of menus or food that we've eaten. Because I know we went and spotlighted some last year when you were here, and we've shown some of those menus like Pop Century. I'll try to find any links to those videos from the Fab Five or the Brookhart Project, and I'll put them down below for us. So right, of course. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, like I said, and we mentioned in the beginning of this episode, um, send us your theme park testimonials at parkhopperpodcast at gmail.com. And also you can go follow Peter and Sarah on their journey over at the Brookhart Project on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can follow myself and Victoria on YouTube at Dom and Vic and on Instagram at Dom and Vic Eats Detroit. Um, we are very excited for our next episode. Thank you for listening. And until next time, this is the Park Hopper Podcast.